So what do you guys think would be the first step with this equation? Subtract two. Why subtract two? We're trying to get what by itself? X. And the X is on the right side with the plus two, so we want to subtract it. I also, when I first look at this, I see a constant here and a constant here. They're like terms. We're also just trying to get them together, right? So I end up with five is equal to the absolute value of X. So can I get, direct you guys back up to the essential question? Why does a solution for an absolute value equation typically result in a pair of equations? What do you know is true about absolute values? Anybody remember the definition of an absolute value? I heard something about opposite numbers. Opposite, oh, yeah. opposite numbers is true. It's not what I think of when I think of the definition, though, although it's, it's related. Yeah. I think of distance from zero. Where are my football fans out there who watched the Seahawks lose yesterday? Every, every time I watch football, I think about absolute values because okay. wherever, okay, picture those of you who were watching on TV, there's that blue line. That's where the line of scrimmage was at the beginning, right? Or where the ball was placed. If they lose, they're going behind that line. If they gain, they're going forward from that line. Is that true? So that's kind of like the zero. Just on a football field, the zero moves based on where the ball is, right? We also have chains in football, don't we? And what do they measure? Ten yards. And they place it, again, at that blue line where the ball was, and they're trying to see if they gained how many yards. So that distance from zero is ten. They don't measure that one backwards because they're always trying to get that ten forward, right? But I think about that as an absolute value, right? That ten is set. It's the distance, that ten yards is the distance from where the ball started makes me think as a math teacher of absolute value. Plus, those chains, they remind me of the symbol, right? There's those two tall things that the chains are connected to so that people can see it from a distance while the chain is down there on the field. So when I'm thinking about the distance from zero, there's two things that are equal distance from zero that are five spaces away. What are the two numbers that would make this true? Say it louder, I heard it. Negative five and positive. So what we could say here is five could be equal to x and negative five can be equal to x. Is that true for both? What's different about what I wrote, the absolute value symbol is now gone. We're saying these two numbers could go into this symbol for x and they would both still be true. Negative 5's absolute value is equal to 5, and 5's absolute value is equal to 5. So read that question again. To make it less confusing, leave the inequality part out and just think about the equation. Why does a solution for an absolute value equation typically result in a pair of equations? Because there's typically two numbers that are the same distance from what number? From our 0. Let's try a different equation and see if we end up again with two different numbers. 2x minus 3 is my inequality, and it equals 1. Did he? I'll tell you what, if there was a game I could have been at this weekend, it would have been the Astros at home against the Yankees. Oh, where did you go? Well, no, it was in Houston. <laughs> By the way, I jumped past graphing it. This is how we would graph that. What? There's no line. For this one, I would end up with negative 5 and... Five as being the only two possible answers that would make this true. 
Okay. You can play it against I don't have system. anything outside the absolute value to move this time. In our example up here, the two was outside the absolute value. You guys told me to subtract it. In this case, what needs to be simplified is inside the absolute value. So here's what we're going to do with this. We're going to set this up two ways by taking away the absolute value. I'm going to say 2x minus 3 is equal to 1 and 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 1. I'm saying positive and negative is my possible actions. And does that make sense with an absolute value? Mm -hmm. So what's the thing I need to do to both of these? I'm going to add 3 to both. In my left equation, I end up with 2x is equal to 4. And in my right side equation, I end up with 2x is equal to what? 2. Divide by 2. I get x is equal to 2. And x is equal to 1. And how would I graph it? 0, 1, 2. This number makes it true, and this number makes it true. Now this one isn't as intuitive because my original equation, everything's inside the absolute value. So to prove it, we're going to reset this up and we're going to make this our check. I'm going to say 2 times 2 minus 3 inside the absolute value is equal to 1. And over here for the check, I'm going to say 2 times 1 minus 3 equals 1. And let's see if what's in this absolute value shows up correctly. Two times two is four. Minus three is equal to one. Is the absolute value of one equal to one? Two times one is two. Minus three. What is two minus three? Negative one. Is the absolute value of negative 1 equal to 1? No. Wait. Absolute value of negative 1 yeah. is 1 away from 0, so it is also true. So both of these check. And I want to encourage you to think about, does it make sense? If you can look at this and this makes sense, because my equation, like if I put 5 absolute value minus 2, And negative 5 absolute value plus 2, does it work? Do both of those work to equal 7? Or just go back to this one. I like this because it totally makes sense on that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We can't do it with a problem that starts like this. We have to go back to the original and put it in because everything inside of it is inside the absolute value. But it worked. We end up with 1, which is positive 1 is equal to 1. We end up with the absolute value of negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is equal to 1. Does that make sense? Okay. So I want you guys, and I'm going to pause the video. I want you to try three equations. I'm interested to see what you guys do with B, and then we'll try these together in just a few minutes. You don't necessarily want to write them like this. I'm putting them because I'm running out of room. You're going to want to solve this one, then solve this one, then solve this one. They'll take space.
Okay, so I'm going to pause and give you guys a few minutes to solve those three absolute value equations, and then we'll come back and I'll do them and we'll compare and see how you're doing on these.